Okay, thank you. Welcome, sit down, this is going to be great, so come on. Okay, uh, me and Pavel, we are both working in IT security, we are entrepreneurs and we do penetration testing and stuff like that. But the project we are going to talk about, it's called Moral Reform and it's about uh, our cooperation with a Czech artistic group called Stohoven, so stohoven.com. And um, uh, the artists, they're usually very good at raising, raising very important questions. So, uh, could you tell me what is the worst type of uh, vulnerability or, or a security problem or an issue? What is the worst one ever? Yeah, that's, that's part of the answer, but basically any that you don't know about. <laughs> If you know about it, you can think about how to fix it, that's, that's easy. But if you don't know about it, it's very problematic. And uh, Stohoven are asking these very important questions and we don't necessarily provide answers, we don't even agree uh, on, on the answers. But uh, just to give you an overview of the kind of the projects we work on, uh, here's a short video and I hope that it will blow your mind. Literally. <laughs> so I hope sounds perfect. vysílání České televize napadli hekři. Napojili se do živého vysílání panoramatických záběrů s informacemi o počasí na programu ČT2 a simulovali v nich výbuch atomové bomby. Svůj čin vysvětlují tak, že chtěli simulací atomového výbuchu upozornit na manipulaci s realitou v médiích. Hekři se přes svůj počítač připojili zřejmě k této kameře a iluzi atomového hřibu vytvořili do černé. Okay, so if you want to hack a public TV, uh, there's a very simple way to, way to do it. You just disconnect the cable from the camera, you connect the cable with your own signal and press play. Very easy. <laughs> and it's something that is very similar to all, all these projects uh, we're going to talk about, there, there will be two more, uh, is that they're not um, technologically advanced projects. That's, uh, that's just like, if you know about the trick, you could do it any time. It's, no, it's not a technological issue, but no one has tried. And um, so this project was about the main question, like if people watch TV or read news, where does the information come from? Uh, is it true? Who wrote it? Uh, why this information and so on? And it's also about uh, our bias. So our minds are programmed to programmed uh, literally by evolution to um, uh, think and perceive and gather information about threats, uh, negative information. So if you are in the woods, in a jungle and there's a snake and it could kill you, it's much more import important information than the fact that the weather is really nice. Yeah? So this is how the media works and it's I, I can't say that it's directly their fault, but it's what we want to we want to see. So um, the the media they're full of this uh, negative information, traffic accidents, murder, um, uh, natural catastrophes, and stuff like that. And um, it's not a it's not a uh, it's not in direct relation to the to the current reality we are living in because. We are all here, we haven't been in an accident, there was no flood that killed us, and um, by any objective def definition, it's totally irrelevant information for our day-to-day -day lives. But we are attracted to it, we, we seek it. So, 
this is one of the questions, like why do, why do we watch it? What, what, uh, what information could we get? And the group learned uh, very, uh, in a very difficult way something that, um, uh, that is sadly true, that they all had their own cell phones with them, so they're very easily tracked. So they had to talk to this nice judge about their nice art project, which is not very usual in the art world, um, and usually it's something really good if you, if you have to explain it to a judge. So they were trying to, uh, uh, to put it in a way that we were causing public panic or something like that. Uh, unfortunately, or fortunately for us, uh, they were not able to find anyone who would say that they were frightened by this, because it's obviously fake. Like the, even the nuclear explosion doesn't look like that. So, uh, yeah, lesson learned, don't bring your phone on <laughs> on these type of events, and we, we learned about it. There is one guy that was uh, present uh, during the project, and he wasn't here standing in front of the judge, and he had an anonym anonymous prepaid SIM card, so they, <laughs> so they didn't track him. Um, <laughs> so, um, it's, um, um, so that, that's mm, very famous, the Hoven project. And uh, they kind of started building ideas about identity, uh, democracy, parliament, money, and other things. And uh, one of the projects uh, that followed this one, um, oh, I have to say there are uh, documentary movies with English subtitles online about most, yeah? Ah, yeah, so, um, okay, so all these projects, they are on the border of, of the law. So we are testing the border, testing the lines where we can go. Um, so uh, for the group, it's very emotional and it's very frightening. So if you go bungee jumping, it's frightening, but you know that you're fixed and you're safe. We don't know with these projects or they didn't know. And um, the thing is that, um, it's kind of, a, kind of a, a purpose of this project to test th this boundary. In this particular case, they uh, couldn't prove that, we, that uh, uh, the nuclear blast caused any panic, but they, uh, they got fine of 100,000 uh, Czech crowns, which is something like 3,000 mm -hmm. euros, very roughly, I don't, I don't know exactly. And, um, at the same year, they won a prize from the, uh, from the National Czech Gallery, so a state gallery. It was a state TV and state gallery that basically the prize money covered the fine and all the lawyers and stuff. So business case was zero, <laughs> yeah. but I'd rather not do it if I can avoid it. But it's kind of the, uh, the thing. And it's always at the border of the law. You, you will see with um, other projects. So, okay, we are here as persons walking around this world and we have our fancy RFID biometric passports and ID cards and we need to show them all around and uh, the state officers ask for them and there's a driver's license and all this stuff. And there's also other secondary things that tie us to our identity. Uh, one of them is cell phone, as we learned, sadly. And um, so this other project uh, was about identity. So uh, it's about uh, absurdities of our society that tries to cope with identity issues of their citizens. And we also learned that it's not easy to go to jail without a valid national ID card. Because <laughs> if you want to enter the jail, they say, oh, please show me your ID card. We need to know that it's you. And <laughs> if you don't have it, you have a problem. You can go to jail. <laughs> or it's not that easy. Um, so, this was the direct follow-up to the card proceedings, and um, uh, the idea was very simple. Uh, we, um, uh, the, the group, uh, they all had the same haircut, and they took up photos with the black t-shirts, and uh, so, uh, and then they used the, mm, they used the morphing software yeah. to create something like inter-identities. So the resulting photos look like this. So there were pairs, 
two and two guys, and they all created this intro identity, and they showed the ID card to their parents, preferably mothers, and they couldn't tell that it's not them. It's one of them was like kind of more fat in the face, the other one was more slim, but the same picture shown to two mothers, and they both said that it's them. So of course, if you can fool your mother, <laughs> And you can very easily fool the, the state bureaucrat that is issuing you the ID card. So in Czech Republic, when you applied uh, during this project, uh, when you applied for an ID card, uh, you would have to uh, bring your own photo. So they printed these nice photos, went there, and then they exchanged their identities for a few months. Um, it's also, okay, is it legal? Who knows? Uh, well. We tested. <laughs> um, uh, the state couldn't prove that we actually caused any damage. So if there's no damage, there's no crime. At least it should be like that, I, I believe. And um, OK, so there's a vulnerability. This is very easily fixed. You just go there, they take your picture, and the vulnerability is gone. So. It's something that you can fix very easily, but it also raised another important question, and that is, how far can you go with this? So they not only exchange their ID cards, which is very frightening. You have to trust someone else with your identity. They could apply for loans, they could uh, take a mortgage, they could, uh, they could uh, go to a wedding and... Uh, Marry someone uh, you don't want to marry. That's actually what we tried. So, uh, of course, the question is, where did the bride sleep that night? <laughs> so, okay, this is kind of, uh, 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 kind of complicated, so be with me. The guy on the right had the ID card of the guy on the left who wanted to marry this girl and use her name. So, uh, of course, they didn't have uh, their own ID cards, they exchanged them. So, during the wedding ceremony, this guy and that guy exchanged. So, the groom was the witness and the witness was the groom. They had to walk the aisle exchanged. And then, uh, then uh, that guy on the left got a new name without him signing any papers or anything. Uh, so, yeah, so he still has her name. Uh, still, until now, they, um, even if it's been proven that the marriage was not correct, it's still valid, and so is everything else. So, what else did they do? What, do you can, what can you do with an ID card? Any ideas? Gun permit, scary, pilot license, what else? <laughs> Get a passport, go to China, go to the UK, where that's, the security is very um, scary, important, and, and so on. Um, uh, yeah, apply for gun permit. So here are the pictures, and they tried everything of that. So um, again, question, why, why do we have these identity cards? 200 years ago, most countries didn't have ID cards. A lot of countries don't use ID cards, but they do use driver licenses or some other form of identification. You could travel without a passport, like the European Union is selling us this great Schengen area, which I really like. But um, yeah, uh, it's great that you, can't, you don't have to travel with a passport. Is there a question? Yeah. Not a demo, but now probably you would. But um, uh, if if um, I don't think it's a, it's in the centralized database. So okay, you apply for a new passport, and if you if the old passport is not biometric, they don't know that you have a different fingerprint. So it's. Yeah, but they also applied uh, for the passport using their fingerprints. Exactly. So yeah, so. The airport, so at the airport, you present the passport, press the finger to the 
Yeah, but they got the passport with the new identity. Yeah. So the right identity no, is on the passport. I'm, I'm after they back. Yeah, but they got passport with the new fake ID card, so the passport matched the fingerprints. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, that, that this problem happens. <coughs> Maybe it's uh, necessary to mention that uh, this project was uh, done in the in the time when it was possible to obtain for a new national ID uh, just that you uh, make your own photo and just bring uh, brought you to yeah. the to the uh, office or mm, issuing yeah. office, but it's not possible anymore. So uh, at this time uh, in Czech Republic, the situation with issuing new uh, ID documents is the same like in. But probably uh, in Poland also, like uh, in Slovakia, that they make photo of you uh, yeah. directly at, at, the, at the, the issuing place. Yeah, but the, but the main point here is that there's one single vulnerability that takes you all the way to the like. If you do it, uh, there's a whole world of possibilities what you can do, and. I personally, I haven't tried yet, <laughs> but I, I don't think uh, it's very difficult to bribe a police officer to give you a new I ID card under a different name. Like, everything has a price. And there's this single point of failure, and I don't think it's a failure because I don't believe that we should have these mandatory ID cards. Um, yeah, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Everyone is totally scared when you discriminate uh, uh, on race, on uh, on uh, gender, on uh, on things like this. Religion. Religion. Yeah, it's always written in a constitution that you can't do it. But all the states discriminate based on where you were born or your uh, or your citizenship, which is weird. Like, I don't understand why why Chinese guy couldn't travel to Slovakia without filling all those forms. Like we. Of course, uh, the, the state would tell you, okay, uh, what about the terrorists and the bad guys? And they say, I think we have a lot of them anyway at home, and it's not a very, very uh, common use case. So most of the people who want to come to any country are honest. They want to see the Statue of Liberty or a President Palace and walk around and maybe find a work or, or something like that. But they they are people, and there's uh, there's this very weird discrimination where uh, where an immigration officer looks at you, asks you five questions, and they say, "No, no, no, you're not too good for us. Go away." So I don't like it, and uh, yeah, here's one project that shows that it's not even secure. It's of course, if you are a terrorist, how difficult is it to get a fake ID card? A bunch of Young <laughs> artists could do it. They're not hackers. They're they're artists. They're painters, filmmakers, and so on. And they did it. So I don't think it's that difficult for anyone who wants to harm the country to to fake this. So I personally don't don't believe that this should happen in this world at all. I really like that at least in some parts of EU and some parts of. Uh, um, USA, you don't have to uh, show any document when you are traveling uh, across borders. But if you look at the Earth from the from the space, there are no borders. There's just land and water. So, um, okay. So the main uh, main idea about these projects is that uh, these artists they can use these uh, hackers' ideas and uh, principles of hacking and uh, use it in pretty unique ways, I think. Uh, so, yeah, we, we are hackers by trade, we make our living by penetrating these banks and doing the, all those penetration tests and stuff like that. But this is very unique, so if, if there's someone who can use this technology in a completely different way, I think it has a lot of value. And uh, we don't... Uh, propose solutions to these problems. So we say, something is really wrong with this. Please, people, think about it. So that's it. And now about the Czech parliament. OK. OK, so uh, till now, this was just an introduction. And uh, I would like to say uh, something about uh, the, our recent project, the moral reform. Uh, as you have probably noticed, according to 
our t-shirts, we are more geeks uh, than artists. So the question is how we met together with uh, the guys from Stahoven, this Czech artistic group. Um, it happened maybe three years ago. Uh, I had a presentation about digital privacy issue uh, in, in Gilina at one uh, conference. Um, <clears throat> and in that time I met two guys from the, this artistic group, uh, Kozen and Romeo. And uh, they had a presentation about uh, their recent uh, Stahoven projects. Uh, when I met these guys, I showed them uh, how it is e very easy to send uh, spoofed SMS text message from arbitrary uh, sender number to arbitrary recipient Andrew number. And these guys, they were completely shocked how it is possible. Uh, because uh, most people are aware that it's possible to send uh, fake or spoofed uh, emails, but most ordinary people or most common people are definitely not aware of the fact that this can be done also in case of SMS text messages. So you can, you can send a text message from arbitrary number to another, uh, another number. And also this one can be, can be made in case of uh, classical JSON calls, for example. So I uh, showed them this possibility. Uh, they were really impressed. And in, it took them maybe a few hours, two or three hours, uh, just to find out how it is possible to, uh, to use this great uh, technical feature. So uh, uh, firstly, I would like to explain uh, why, we, uh, why, why did we decide to uh, address Czech politician or or Czech government. Maybe you know, maybe you know, maybe not. Uh, Czech government or Czech politicians, they have really a uh, big crisis as politicians in, in some other, uh, other countries. There is quite strong moral decay. So uh, a lot of these politicians are, are corrupt. Uh, in Czech Republic, during recent year, every, each year, every year they they have a different government, uh, and every, every uh, after after one year, usually some politician um, are accused of some corruption, and and they they had to leave. So they so you can say make a wish the government is falling down. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So uh, in Czech Republic, the situation is really bad uh, and really sad. Ninety percent of all uh, Czech citizens, uh, they are really dis disappointed uh, of any Czech party. Uh, so uh, we, we, we just wanted to, e to exploit or to use this fact in our project. And uh, we invented uh, drama because these guys, uh, these guys are uh, artists, art, artists and film filmmakers and they have uh, they had many experiences with, uh, with writing scenarios. Uh, we decided to cre create a drama, and uh, we decided to call this drama Mor Moral Reform. So, uh, the Moral Reform is a parliamentary drama of 223 persons, uh, including all members of parliament, including uh, Czech prime minister, including Czech president, uh, including a lot of people from uh, from Czech media, like press, uh, with 585 lines. So uh, all all this all, all this drama, all, all this text was represented by 500, uh, five or more more than 600 SMS text messages, and uh, we sent all these messages uh, across whole Czech Parliament between each, mem each, each member of the parliament and each politician uh, who was sitting at, uh, at, at one, one time at, at one place. Uh, maybe you know this guy, but probably not. This guy uh, is Rat. It is Czech politician uh, who, was, uh, who was accused of corruption uh, he stole about nine million Czech crowns. Uh, he had this uh, the, uh, this huge amount of money in his house. 
So uh, at this picture we can see he was arrested because of this crime and because he was member of Czech parliament, uh, he had an official defending speech in this parliament. Uh, because it was quite important even in Czech Republic, uh, we decided to use this fact and we, we planned uh, sending or execution of this, of this drama and sending all hundreds of these text messages exactly during this defending speech. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of people in Czech Republic uh, were watching this live stream. It was broadcasted by uh, main, the government Czech television. So uh, we were watching this live stream and, as, and we tried to to uh, firstly we try to control if it if it works or not so we try to send some testing sms messages okay so uh, this was the live video stream and when when it started we uh, we sent the first text messages and okay Okay, so there's no sound because it's only politician talking. You would okay, be interested. So, <laughs> okay, so <laughs> on this uh, on this video, you can uh, you can see a corrupt politician Rad on the left side. Uh, it's there not is Rad, by the way, but it doesn't matter. Okay. It's some 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 guy. The prime minister. Uh, on the left side, you can uh, you can see a popular Czech politician uh, Karel Schwarzenberg, uh, who is sleeping all the time uh, during. <laughs> Uh, during his work on the right, right side. That's, by the way, the best thing to do. I would, if I was a politician, I would also sleep there. Just sleep. Yeah. <laughs> on the right side, you can you can see uh, female politician uh, Carolina Peak, and um, at the she beginning, she just got a message. Uh, at the beginning, uh, we sent uh, spoof text messages, uh, text message from this sleeping guy. <laughs> So she's to, contemplating you. And uh, she received this message and thinking, and thinking <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> and now she's going to write about it on Facebook, probably. Yeah. <laughs> thinking. <laughs> and he's still sleeping. <laughs> okay, so that's the live stream that we watched. Uh, and the text message uh, that was sent from Karel Schwarzenberg to uh, Karolina Pieck uh, was the text message observing the current political situation. I realized that it cannot continue this way anymore. We have to do something significant, something that will fundamentally change our society. So, as you can see, this text message was really highly positive. And not only this one, but each message we, we sent was really highly positive. And uh, thanks to this first message, we, uh, we definitely knew that it, that it worked and we, can, uh, or we could send another, another batch of our text messages. So we started to send another few hundreds of text messages. I, I just want to say one thing. Uh, so when it started to happen, they uh, unfortunately realized very fast that uh, these messages are fake because the sitting is not set in the Czech parliament. So if there was someone sitting next to me and I got the text message from him and he's sleeping, uh, I, I realized that uh, it's probably fake. But what was very interesting is that the politician, he was speaking, but no one fr in the parliament was paying attention. They were talking about their mobile phone, so there was this whisper and you could see it on, on the live stream that, that people are talking, they're walking around and showing phones to each other. So it's kind of boycotted the defending speech. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> and um, the bad, um, bad consequences of, of this event was, uh, for example, we can see another text message. Maybe it does not look like that, but I like your, you anyway. Um, the, the, the bad consequences of, uh, of this drama was that uh, all, all politicians in Czech Republic uh, who had officially, official uh, 
speech about 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 uh, sending these spoof text messages, they they did not focus on the content of the text messages. They completely ignore it. They care not about the content, which which was our, our goal of the project, just to be to to, to moral reform, to be better, to be honest. Uh, they they focus. On, on the fact, for example, how we gain mobile numbers of, of, of these old people, old politicians. Uh, also, uh, they, uh, they uh, accuse Czech mobile operator how it is possible to send uh, so many uh, spoof text messages. So they, uh, they try to find some victim. And, and it was quite sad because our original goal of this project was just to show, to demonstrate that uh, every, everyone in, in, in parliament, every Czech politician uh, should, imp should be improved or should be better. Be yeah. more moral, don't, don't, uh, don't be corrupt, corrupt and so. So it's also a very, very good strategy because if you think about it, if you receive the text like that, you can't go on live TV and tell to the reporter, I don't agree with these text messages that said that I should be better. It's wrong. <laughs> they wouldn't do it, so they try to avoid the content at all possible cost. So, yeah. They're really good at what they're doing. Okay, now uh, <laughs> I would like to say more words about uh, the most. Yeah, yeah. That's a uh, trade secret for now because we, yeah, but it's not too difficult. But you can get them. <laughs> we'll show you. <laughs> we we just don't want to, uh, yeah. Well, okay. So because this is a technical conference, I would like to say more technical words about uh, how we achieve it, and what was the most difficult part of of this project. Uh, Maybe you know when you want to send an uh, anonymous text message at the moment, it's, it's quite easy. You just find uh, the proper uh, online service uh, where it is possible to buy a lot of uh, text messages where, uh, with the possibility of sending spoofed sender, for example. But it's much more difficult uh, when you want to achieve anonymity. So the most difficult part of our project was definitely achieving anonymity. Fortunately, in Czech Republic, also in Austria, it is possible to buy anonymous prepaid SIM card, which is, for example, not, uh, which is, uh, not legal, it, it's strongly illegal in, in Slovakia. I don't know what, is, what the situation is, is in Poland. But, uh, so, so we bought anonymous prepaid SIM cards. Uh, before that, we tried anonymous PayPal account for ex to make an anonymous PayPal account. It was really difficult and complicated, and and PayPal as a company, uh, they they had or they have a lot of security checks, and it was really difficult to bypass these security checks. So uh, then we then we tried to use some uh, we, we, we tried to buy uh, anonymous uh, text messages for bitcoins. Uh, we we found the website called Text for Coins, but unfortunately, it was not possible to, to buy so many. Few, we, we needed a few hundreds of text messages, and it was not possible to, to buy using bitcoins on this service. So we, we had to find some other solutions, some other alternatives. Uh, so we did it in such a way that we uh, bought anonymous people SIM cards. We, uh, in other Czech supermarket, we bought Anonymous uh, uh, credit. We charge. We charge this anonymous uh, SIM card with this anonymous credit. Of course, our, our our official mobile phones we left at home, just not to be tracked. We have uh, we ha have some really bad experiences from the the, the past projects. <laughs> and and then we we found another uh, some some online service in Estonia or Latvia. And we just convert our mobile credit from anonymous SIM cards to few hundreds of uh, these okay. anonymous text text messages, and uh, because this so it's paid by SMS. Basically. Yeah, so so it was paid by it was paid by SMS, by credit by mobile by but by, by, by mobile credit. Uh, yeah, but at this moment uh, there are another. There, there are some other ways, ways how it is possible to uh, to pay it anonymously. 
I would like to mention uh, the service which is called Cash for Web, which is completely anonymous Austrian prepaid card, MasterCard. So uh, you you can go to Austria and and buy a few of them of these cards with a limit of 150 euros. And using this prepaid card, you can you can pay any any online service uh, completely anonym um, uh, com completely anonymously. So it works really, really well. Okay, so then we um, create this website. Uh, this website uh, shows uh, the structure of the parliament. There's an office of the president and all the text messages. So we, if it's a parliamentary drama, you should be able to see it. So this is the script. There, there's also a page with all the text, but you can see it in the time. So there's a time slider. You can see the text messages. They're translated to English. So. If you want to have some fun, even without understanding, it's pretty interesting. Uh, we don't understand Czech politics either. That's the Czech president, and and yeah, so that's the the castle. Uh, there's some press around, and colors mean different political parties. And this slider it uh, shows the text messages as they were sent. So do 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 do. Um, uh, the last one was the text messages from the castle, from the, uh, I think, secretary of the castle to all the heads of the politi political parliament, uh, calling an urgent meeting uh, of heads of all parliamentary parties on acceptation of the moral reform. And after MPs meeting, Mr. President is going to expect all of them in the castle and discuss this moral reform. I don't think they went there. <laughs> But, um, so, okay, uh, the, the reaction of the media was uh, not very positive, they were, or uh, it was very limited. They were uh, focusing on, uh, on, uh, on the corruption scandal. They, there were some news about this, but there should be something more. So we created um, uh, some, some uh, part uh, called the Moral Reform 2, the public round. So this is the contemporary art gallery in Czech Republic. There's this installation with moral reform, the same structure of the parliament. And you can see there are politicians and their phone numbers. So if you paid, uh, if you bought a ticket and went to there, you could get all the phone numbers. So this is, for example, the phone number of the Czech president at the time. Uh, and uh, it's not only about the numbers. There was this nice phone uh, that, that had an anonymous uh, SIM card and you could text any of your politicians. To, uh, to this had very serious media reaction because, of course, if you can text a politician anonymously, uh, it's not going to be nice. So there were death threats and stuff <laughs> and they really didn't like this. They were, th they were talking about it much more than, than the first round of the project a lot of media attention and so on. So, uh, so one of the main reactions, of course, was that the politicians said, well, you should, uh, you should uh, uh, release your phone numbers as, as well. If you're holding us to a standard, you should uh, do the same thing. So yeah, here are our phone numbers. All of the other guys from the group released there, so feel free to text us. Uh, we haven't received any death threats yet, <laughs> but we receive a lot of really nice and interesting text messages from time to time. So if people watch our talks and so on, they, they can write us. So we have no problem with, with this. Uh, the politicians had this problem. Uh, I bet someone is going to ask about legal consequences. So I spare you the time. All was legal. Everything was perfect. And uh, phone numbers of the uh, of the uh, employees of public sector and uh, politicians is not private inf uh, information in Czech Republic. So by releasing this information, no one has done anything wrong. Uh, people should have those numbers. So yeah. don't worry about it. It's not even, uh, we could, you couldn't even get a fine. It's not private information. Yeah. So fortunately, so we were not sued uh, because of this. Yeah, but they tried. They, they were uh, talking about it, but they said that uh, it's all right. So we have five minutes for questions, I guess. Right. Questions? There's one.
And just curious, uh, did your involvement in this Stochowen action cost any international affair? Because you both are Slovakian, not Czech. <laughs> No, <laughs> so maybe you should but, try this uh, in Poland. <laughs> uh, we spoke about it publicly a few months after uh, it was all finished. So the so the group uh, they, uh, the group Stochowen uh, doesn't have a, like a, um, fixed set of members. So a lot of members just c come from for one project and go. So even if you say that Stochowen did this, it's not names of the people. So they didn't. Maybe they did know, but we were not public with this information. And I think uh, it was on maybe even one year after uh, the project that I had a TEDx talk, a very short one about hacktivism and this. And uh, yeah, I travel to Czech Republic quite often and I wasn't arrested or anything, but <laughs> you know, really the politicians, they wanted this to go away. They didn't want to talk about it. They wanted just to be over and do their own business. So thankfully, but you never know, like uh, when we did it, we didn't know what would happen. Like uh, I personally think that if we did it, this in Slovakia, it would end much differently. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, 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 the problem is that uh, Stahoven, like artistic group has a really good reputation uh, in Czech Republic. So uh, no politician or no no man in Czech Republic usually can afford to sue some of these guys. Uh, but I'm more than sure that if we, if we did the similar project uh, in Slovakia, not under brand of, under brand of Stahoven, uh, it's quite likely we would end up in, in jail. <laughs> so uh, the first reaction was that there's, it's a problem of mobile operators and they should fix it. And uh, why didn't the secret service know about this? How did they get the phone numbers? And how is it possible to do it? You could cause an international incident. And they were doing, they were having these big guys talk about it. And when they learned, uh, I think the next day or two days later, that it's a project of Stohoven, they were just like, nah, okay, we know them. So it was pretty, pretty okay. Um, yeah. So there's this a uh, good feature of artistic group that uh, you can afford uh, doing such such thing and such theoretically dangerous stuff uh, without yeah. without uh, possibility to, to to be sued. Yeah. So uh, was it hard to get the phone numbers of all the members of the parliament? It wasn't hard, <laughs> but. Uh, we don't want to tell how we got, but okay. we got it from yeah. the people who had them and okay. we didn't hack any t anywhere to do anything wrong. We just got them in an, an Excel sheet. So. Uh, and the second question, uh, did the bride knew about the fake ID? Yes, of course. She's <laughs> member of the group, so oh, okay. yeah. they got married because of the project, basically. Like, uh, re regarding this uh, Citizen K, uh, this fake marriage and also uh, the possible uh, the the uh, gun permission, all all of these uh, are still valid, this, despite the fact that uh, these documents are not valid anymore. So. so basically, how the state deals with this problem is that they say that it's wrong to do it, but there's no process when someone does it. So like there is no way to revoke these yeah, things and yeah. so on. So. Okay, so I have a question. Well, uh, do you know about any other actions that have been inspired by Stochowen's actions? Because in Poland there was, there was a wave of free freedom of information questions about different politicians' phone numbers. So I guess some people heard about your action. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm not sure how it finished, but there was a court case about the president of Poland's mobile number because I guess it's comfortable if the country pays for your mobile calls, but on the other hand, it's considered public information. Uh, actually, I don't think that most of the phone numbers were paid by the... Well, in the end, they were paid by... But they, they were their private no numbers, mostly. Uh, but, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Like, uh, I think it's at least morally correct to uh, kind of communicate with people that vote for you. Um, I don't know, like it, it depends on the law and everything. So uh, I don't know uh, how it's in Poland and, and so on. But it's, 
even some politicians, even in Slovakia, they publish their phone numbers on their website, especially before elections. <laughs> so some of them even have them on, on the billboards. So it's not uh, very uncommon to, to publish these. But I don't know what's right. We just ask the question. <laughs> Any other question? Okay, if not, thank you very much for the interesting lecture. Thank you. Big applause. Okay. Thank you a lot.